Hello, in this short series we'll be creating a simple sliding block puzzle. I've split the project into six tasks, and after I describe each task, I recommend you pause the video and try complete it on your own. The first task is simply to instantiate a grid of quads at runtime. You should be able to set the size of the grid in the inspector, and the orthographic camera should resize to keep the entire grid visible on screen. I recommend you instantiate the quad starting from the bottom left like so, because this will just make it easier to add the correct images to each quad later on. Okay, time to pause. Alright, I'm going to work through this first task, so I'll quickly create a new project called Sliding Blocks, and set that to 2D. And in here, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called Puzzle, and open that up. So in here, I want a public integer for the number of blocks per line, and I'll set that to 4 by default. And then I'm going to have a method called create puzzle. And this is just going to have a pair of for loops to iterate over the grid, starting with 4 int y equals 0, y less than blocks per line, and then inside there 4 int x equals 0, x less than blocks per line. Then inside this inner for loop, I'm going to instantiate my block object. So I'll say game object block object is equal to game object dot create primitive, and the primitive type that I want is quad. All right. Now I need to set its position. So block object dot transform dot position is equal to. And here I should probably stop and think about this. So each quad is one by one world units. And I want to start placing these from the bottom left of the grid, but of course I want the overall grid to be centered on the screen. So if I imagine just having one block, then obviously its center should be at zero. And if I imagine placing two blocks on the x-axis, then the first one should be at negative 0.5, and the second one should be at positive 0.5. So with that in mind, I think I can position this by saying negative vector 2.1 multiplied by blocks per line minus one, because if there's one block, then I want it to be at zero. And then I'll multiply that by a half. And finally, I'll add new vector two, x comma y. All right, let me then quickly just set block object dot transform dot parent equal to this transform. And also create a start method to call the create puzzle method from. All right, I'll save that and go into Unity and just press Command Shift N to create an empty game object there, and I'll attach the puzzle script to that, and press play. So, you can see I've got my 4x4 grid here, it seems to be nicely centered on the screen, and if I just go through these uh, objects here, you can see it's instantiating in the order that I wanted. So, the only thing left to do this task is to set the camera size to nicely fit the grid onto the screen. Now, orthographic size is half of the screen height in world units. So, for example, with the size of 5, I could create a cube and scale that to 10 on the y-axis, and you can see that just fits in. So, let me go back into the script, and just at the bottom of the create puzzle method here, I'm going to say camera.main.orthographic size is equal to the number of blocks per line times a half, and that will make it so that the grid fits exactly into the screen height, but I want to give it a little bit of leeway uh, at the top and the bottom, so let me just change this to something like 0.55. Now if I save that, and run this again, you can see the 4x4 grid is now just fitting into the screen height with a little bit of uh, space to spare, and if I change this to 10, for example, we should see that it still fits in nicely. Okay, so that is the end of task one. For the second task, you should hide the bottom right block of the grid and then make the blocks respond to input. So clicking on any block adjacent to the empty space should move it into that empty space. Okay, so the first thing I want to think about is how I'm going to detect when the player clicks on a block. Now, these quad objects that I'm instantiating all have a collider attached by default, which means that they will be receiving mouse events. So if I can attach a script to each of these, 
then I'll have an easy way of knowing when any of them are pressed. So I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called block, and I'll open that up. And I want this to have an onBlock pressed event that the puzzle script can subscribe to to be notified when the block is pressed. So I'll create a public event, and I want the event to have a parameter, which is going to be the block itself that's pressed. So I'll say system.action of type block, and I'll call this on block pressed. And then in this on mouse down method, which gets called automatically on any object that has a collider attached, we can say if the on block pressed event is not null, then it can be safely invoked, passing in this block. All right, I'll save that, go into the puzzle script, and at the bottom here, I'm going to create a method called something like player move block input, which takes in a block, which I'll call the block to move. All right, I'll worry about the implementation of that in a moment. But for now, I want to add the block script to each of the block objects and get a reference to that block script. So I can say block block is equal to block object dot add component of type block. All right, and then we can say block dot on block pressed and subscribe the player input method. All right, I want to quickly hide the uh, bottom right block. So I'm going to say if y is equal to zero and x is equal to blocks per line minus one, then block object dot set active false. And I also want to get a reference to that block. So I'm going to create block, empty block up at the top here. And then here say empty block is equal to block. All right, so with a reference to that empty block, I can now uh, implement this move block input method. So I'll start off not worrying about legal moves. I just want to swap the block that gets pressed with the empty block. So I'll start off by writing empty block dot transform dot position is equal to block to move dot transform dot position. Now I want to set the block to moves position uh, equal to the empty blocks position as it was before I changed it. So I'm going to have to store that up here. Vector to I'll call this target position is equal to empty block dot transform dot position, and then I can set block to move to transform to position equal to target position. All right, so if I save this, go into Unity, I should be able to click on any of these blocks and have them swap with the empty block. Now, of course, we want to enforce legal moves. So one way of doing this would be to say that a block can only move if it is within one unit from the empty block. So let me try doing that. I'll say can only move if block to move dot transform dot position minus empty block dot transform dot position has a magnitude or a square magnitude that is equal to one. So if I save that, go into Unity, I can test that this is working by just clicking on some of these blocks adjacent to the empty block and making sure that those are allowed to move, and then also clicking on some of these blocks that shouldn't be able to move and just verifying that they don't. All right, now, even though this is working perfectly, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with the solution that I have. And I think this is because I'm using the world position of these blocks to calculate a core rule of the game. So imagine, for example, I later on decide that instead of scaling the camera to fit all of the blocks onto the screen, I'm going to scale the blocks themselves. Suddenly, the distance between adjacent blocks would no longer be equal to one, and so by making such a trivial change, I'd have broken a core part of the game's logic, which is obviously bananas. So what I'm going to do is go into the block script, and here I'm going to create a public vector to int variable called coord. And in the puzzle script, I will set that over here, block.coordinate is equal to a new vector to int x comma y. Now, instead of using the world position of these blocks, 
I can use the coordinates and then I think I'll be able to sleep much easier at night. Of course, I will have to swap the coordinates when the block moves. So let me have vector2 int target coordinate equal to empty block dot coordinate. And then I'll set the empty blocks new coordinate as block to move dot coordinate. And finally set block to moves new coordinate to the target coordinate. Okay, that's task two done. So the third task is to dig around for an image you like and get that image displayed across the grid. So there are basically two ways I can think of going about this. The first is to modify the UV coordinates of each of the blocks so that they each only show their portion of the image. And the second is to just slice up the image into a bunch of chunks for each of the blocks. I'm going to be taking this second approach. So I'm going to create a new c -sharp script called image slicer and I'll open that up and I want to make this a public static class so it won't inherit from mono behavior of course and it's going to have a public static method returning a two-dimensional array of texture 2ds I'll call this get slices and this will take in a texture 2d for the image that I want to slice up and an integer for the number of blocks per line. In case the supplied image isn't square, I'll say image size is equal to the minimum of image.width and image.height. And then I also want to figure out the size in pixels of each block. So I'll say block size is equal to image size divided by blocks per line. All right, and then I'm going to create a 2D array of texture 2Ds, call this blocks, and just set that equal to a new array of size blocks per line by blocks per line. Then just like in the puzzle script, I'm going to have a pair of for loops for int y equals zero, y less than blocks per line, and inside there for int x equals zero, x less than blocks per line. In here, I'll say texture 2D block is equal to a new texture 2D with a width and height of a block size. Then I can set the pixels of this block texture from the supplied image. So I'll say image.getPixels and we'll find this overload here that takes in uh, X, Y and block width, block height. So I'll just be passing in x multiplied by block size uh, to get the x coordinate in pixels and y multiplied by the block size. And then the width and height are both just block size. All right, having set the pixels, I need to just call this apply method on the texture. And then I'll add this block to the array. So blocks with an index x comma y is equal to the block I just created. Finally, return the blocks. Okay, so I'll save that and head into the puzzle script where at the top I'll have a public texture2d variable called image. And then at the top of the create puzzle method, I'll have a texture2d array called image slices. And this will be equal to image slicer dot get slices, passing in that image and the number of blocks per line. Now I need some way to apply these images to each of the blocks. And I think it's best if the uh, block class handles this. So I'm just going to make a public void called uh, initialize. And this can take in texture 2D for the image. And just to streamline things a little bit, I guess it can also take in the uh, coordinate. So I'll have vector2 int starting coordinate. And here I'll just set coordinate equal to the starting coordinate. And I want to get the uh, mesh renderer component. So I'll say get component mesh renderer dot material dot main texture is equal to the supplied image, like so. All right, so let me save that, go back to the puzzle script, 
and now I'll say block dot initialize, passing in my coordinate, so x comma y, as well as image slices with an index x comma y. All right, let me save this and go into Unity, and I need a image to use. So let me just grab this one over here, a picture of me and my dog several years ago. And I'm going to be sure to enable read write in the settings here so that the image slicer can read the pixels from it. I'll apply that and drag it on to the image here. I'll then press play. And we can see this is basically working. Uh, but the image is very dark because there are no lights in the scene. And there are also these strange lines going across here. So to fix this, uh, first of all, let me go into the block script. And I'm going to change the shader that the material uses to an unlit shader so that we don't need to have any lights. So I'm going to say get component material dot shader is equal to shader.find, and then I'll just pass in the name of the shader I want, which is unlit slash texture. All right, now to get rid of those lines that were going across the image, I need to come into the image slicer here and just set the blocks wrap mode equal to texture wrap mode dot clamp. Okay, so uh, let me try this out once more. So uh, that's working very nicely. The only thing is my dog is cut off. So I'm going to take the simple option here and just uh, crop the image by hand to get the sort of region that I want. So just something like that. I'll crop, save, and once it imports, I'll be done with task three. So that is everything for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be doing the remaining three tasks to finish the game. Until then, cheers.